This video is going to demonstrate on how to perform a year-end process. There are several steps to year-end. Uh, first one being is closing the financial year. Then there is closing the income statement. And then there is replacing the restrictions in place to stop you from posting previously. Now before you do all of that, one thing that we suggest, and it's very good practice, is to create a backup of your company. Now, to do this, please contact a member of the team. Um, we'll create a backup. And if you get this wrong, we can just roll um, your system straight back to before you've attempted to close the year end. Again, I would recommend that you probably do this uh, potentially at the weekend when no one else is using your system as well. So to start with, the first task is to close the accounting period. To do this, you need to search for account periods and you want accounting periods. And this is going to show you your financial years. So in this demo company, the fiscal year started on January the 1st, 2019. And each preceding year starts on the same time. So what we need to do, we need to actually close this year. Now this doesn't prevent you from um, posting, uh, from back posting. It just means that you'll get a warning and every transaction is marked. Um, it just puts a little mark on the transaction when you actually post into a closed year. So at this point, you're not stopping yourself from making year-end adjustments, etc. So to do this, you go to Process, Close Year. And this is just warning me that it's going to close the fiscal year from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. Do you want to close the fiscal year? Yes, we do. So you see it's now closed this down, and it's actually locked this date. So you can no longer adjust the dates within this financial year which is fine, but as I said, you can still back post. Now it's good practice from this stage to actually create your next financial year. So you've always got at least a year ahead of you. Um, if you don't create a final, if you, if you actually run out of months, the system will stop you from making transactions. So to make a new year, you go process, create year from when you want to do it. So we can see that the last year that, um, Currently, the last period that we've got set up is 1st of January 2021. We want number of period to be 12 and the period length to be one month. Press OK. And this has created the following year now. So that's closing the accounting period. So the next thing we need to do is close the income statement. Now, I'm going to show you an example of what I mean when I say close the income statement. So if you search for your chart of accounts, you have your balance sheet, which you'll see here. And then you have all of your income statement from that. Um, well, actually, this will be to the current date. But let's say we filtered the totals by uh, date. And we want the 1st of the 12th, 2019. So this is the balance sheet leading up to the last, at the end of the last financial year. And this is the income statement. Now, when you're doing a year-end journals um, on older systems, you would have journaled all of these profit and loss accounts or income statement accounts into your retained earnings account. Well, in Garage Hive, it will do this completely automatically for you. Um, so this is what the chart of account currently looks like. I want to get all of these values all the way down on the income statement back to zero. And I want to do a journal that's going to place all of the values into the retained earnings. So let's see how we do this. So again, you need to search for close income statement. And you're going to be presented with a window that's going to create a journal for you. So I recommend that you just use, in the general journal template, just use general. In the general journal batch, just use default. It should automatically populate a document number for you. If not, feel free to enter your own. Um, that's a good reference to year end. If uh, yeah, in fact, I'll just leave that as it is, but you can put what you'd like here. You then need to select the retained earnings account. Now, this should be automatic. If it's not, just look for your retained earnings account. And the description is close income statement. And that's all we need. So if we press OK now, it's telling me the journal lines has been have been successfully created. So at this point, it's not um, posted any journals it's just created a journal that's going to simulate year end so now we're going to search for our general journals 
And within here, we can see that we have a journal that's been written and it's essentially going to adjust all of the income statement that has balances and put it into the retained earnings. If you want to see the detail of this journal, if you just go to page, show more columns, you can now see what the system's doing. So it's taken all of these values out of the income statement, general ledger accounts, and it's going to credit the retained earnings account. And you can see that the posting date is actually the end of the financial year. So from here, we go process, post. Do you want to post the journal lines? Yes, we do. So that has now posted the, 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 the year end journal. So let's take a quick look at the chart of accounts and just see what this has done. So if we filter the dates back to the end of the previous financial year, we can see that the income accounts have been completely cleared down, which is exactly what we want. And we can see that the retained earnings account has been credited. So it's moved all of the profit and loss or income statement back to retained earnings. So that is essentially a, an automated year end journal for you. Now, there are just a couple of other things that I want to speak about. So if you at this point, you can technically still post into the previous year. This has not locked the system down. You have a couple of options on how you decide to lock this down. So the first method is via general ledger setup. So you need to search and search for general ledger setup. Then you see you've got allow posting from and allow posting to. So if I wanted to prevent anybody from posting in the previous financial year, um, I would go to the, I think it was the 1st of December. And then I could just prevent anybody from posting back into this date now. So anything before here, we can't post into. And again, if you don't want people forward posting, you can actually set restrictions here as well, just like this. Now, there's one other place that you can set restrictions. So that was a system-wide restriction. The last place is under user setup you actually have the facility to set posting ranges on individual users. Now this will supersede whatever you've set up in the general ledger setup for the company wide posting. So if you want your accountants login to have full access, then you can allow them to post from whatever date range that you like and this will override the general ledger. If you leave this blank, this is just going to default to the um, company default, which was in the general ledger setup, which we've just done. So that is it. That's the year end process from start to finish. So just to confirm, if you're going to do this, please talk to one of the teams so we can arrange a date and time so we can back up your system. So if you get this wrong, it's very easy for us to revert. You first of all need to close your accounting periods. It's then great practice to set up your next um, accounting period. You then close the income statement, which would do your journal for you, your year-end journal from the income statement to retained earnings. You then set the restrictions to prevent anybody from posting into the previous year. So I hope that was clear. If you have any questions, please let me know.